Hi, so if you're being ghosted or breadcrumbed, <laughs> I have three tips to help you manage your feelings. And then I'm gonna give you my recommendation on what you can do so that you can move forward and just move on from this person. Hi, my name is Tess Brigham. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, board certified coach, and I'm here every single Thursday with um, a new video, so please subscribe to my channel. So, breadcrumbing and ghosting. If you don't know either of these, <laughs> um, ghosting's been around for a while, as we know. Breadcrumbing is something that I've just heard of in the last, I wanna say, six months, year. So ghosting is you're dating someone and you know you might be seeing each other, you've gone on a couple dates, maybe you slept together, maybe something more has happened, who knows? And suddenly they've disappeared. You know, it's like they've been abducted by aliens. You don't hear from them again. And it's very, it's not like you had a big fight. It's not like something happened. It's just, it kind of just went away. And then breadcrumbing is, and I think this one's even harder, is maybe you're dating someone, seeing someone, maybe you guys have been talking and you've maybe gone on one date or maybe you haven't even met yet. And it's like, things are good, you're texting, you're gonna go out on a date, then something happens and maybe you don't date and, and then you don't hear from them in a while and then a week later, they start like showing up and, and texting you, but it's super random, right? Like they used to text you, but now they're commenting on all of your Instagram photos, which is very confusing. Or, um, you know, it's a couple weeks and you're finally kind of over the person and then suddenly, boom, a text pops up and they want to have a chat with you and then you go through the cycle again and then you're going to get close to meeting them and that happens again, right? They're leaving little breadcrumbs, just enough to keep you interested and just enough to keep you sort of on the hook to do this dance with them. So as I describe both of these, I want you to stop and really think about, is this behavior <laughs> that I want and someone that I want to date? Like if you really step back and think about it, do I want to date someone who is going to do something like ghost me or breadcrumb me, right? And so in the, in, you know, there's that great quote by Maya Angelou, right? When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. I think both of these things are huge indicators of where this person is at in their life and what their intentions are. And so this is my three-step process that I want you to go through. When you recognize I've been ghosted, I've been bread, I'm being breadcrumbed, I want you to stop and say, okay, you get to first Number one, mourn. You get to mourn the loss of the fact that this relationship, which felt like, or whatever it was, felt kind of exciting and new, that this person seemed super cool, that you were getting along. Mourn that this is not the person that you're gonna be with, not right now, not gonna happen. And that's okay, and it's totally okay to feel disappointed. I think a lot of times what we, when we have these kinds of situations, we go in one or two directions. We either really dig this big hole for ourselves and start to feel really bad and wonder what's wrong with us, or we sort of brush it off completely and be like, I don't need that person, let's go. So I want you to pick something that's in between. Mourn the loss of the fact that the relationship isn't gonna work right now, and also just recognize that it's, that you, you know, you get a little time to mourn and then it's time to move forward. You can feel sad, you can feel disappointed, you have the right to all your feelings. But number two is you cannot take it personally. And I know it sounds bizarre for me to say, don't take it personally. It's about me. They don't want to be with me. <sighs> Why this person doesn't want to be with you right now has got to do with so many different things. Yes, there may be some part of it where they don't really feel a connection with you. They don't really feel a spark. And the person that's willing to say to you, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, I just don't feel a connection, I don't feel that, they're not ghosting you and breadcrumbing you, that, that person who's up front with you, they're gonna tell you. This is somebody who does not have the guts or the ability to say to you, hey, I just don't feel a connection. So then we're to, this person might feel a connection with you, but they might be scared to death to be into any kind of relationship. They also might be going on apps and telling people, yeah, I want to be in a relationship, but really they don't. <laughs> they want something else. So that's really important to remember as well, is you can't take it personally because this person who's all over the place and texting you here and disappearing and all this, you've got to step back and look at that and go, what's going on here with this person? That behavior is erratic and it's not about me, it's about them and how they're living their lives. 
and they can't be honest with me or truthful or upfront about how they really feel or what they really want. Okay, that's number two. Number three is, I've already alluded to it, but it's about them. It's about where they are in their lives, the stage of their lives. It's about timing. And so I remember my mom said this to me when I was young and she was absolutely right. All of life is timing, it's timing. Why two people click and connect? Well, that chemistry, that that thing, that's hard to put a, uh, you know, hard to, um, you know, nail down and really understand. And that is an amazing, wonderful thing. That's one part of making a successful relationship. The second part is both people have to be willing and wanting to have a relationship at the same time. And that's the thing that has to do with timing. And so that's the part that you can't really control. It's about them and their own stuff. So if you're currently being, if you've currently been ghosted or breadcrumbed, here's my two steps. These are the two things I want you to do, which is number one, if this was a relationship that was like pretty serious or was pretty extensive, you've gone on several dates, there was something there, then you can be, be upfront, be honest, be the better person, be the better communicator than that person is and say, hey, I haven't heard from you a while. I'm wondering what's going on with you. Checking in. I think how they respond to that, when they respond to it, how quickly they respond to it will speak volumes. If this is someone that you have not, eh, you've been talking here and there, all of that. Number two is you've got to be done, 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 done. Meaning don't keep responding to the texts. Don't keep responding to the Instagram messages. Just don't respond at all. They will disappear. They will. I think a lot of times there's this illusion that like, oh, okay, well, maybe if I, you know, maybe this time when they circle back around to me that that it's going to be different or if it's going to be better. It's not. They're showing you who they are. Somebody who wants to have a serious relationship with you is not ghosting you and they're not breadcrumbing you. They're making it known that they want to be with you. They're not all over the place. So keep that in mind. Okay. If you are struggling with an ex, I have another video here on YouTube called Stop Obsessing on Your Ex. So go check that out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and even better, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm here every single week. All right, that's it for this week. I'll see you next time. Bye.